It's time to heat things up and get your body nice and hot. So doing a warm up is really important because when we warm up and do warm up exercises, we start to heat up our internal core temperature. And when we do that, not only are we going to be feeling mentally prepared and get start to get into that mindset of a workout, but also it's really beneficial for our muscles and joints. Unless you are the very few selected people that can just jump into a workout, not get any pain, and of course always feel those muscles work properly, well, most of us not so much. Most of us really do benefit from warming up, and when we warm up, we start to feel the right muscles start to activate in our training session. So to get started, make sure you're wearing some comfortable workout clothes that you feel free and not restricted, and of course, get your mat ready. So we're gonna start off in the cat-cow pose. I'm gonna quickly demonstrate, and then you can follow along, and then for the majority of the other exercises, I of course will demonstrate, and then you will follow along for the recommended repetitions. So let's get into it. So starting off in cat-cat pose, hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. You're going to drop your stomach down, arch your back, take a beautiful inhale, and then exhale as you round your shoulder blades back, push your hands deep into the floor, and really focus on drawing that belly button in as you round everything. And then we're going to repeat the process again, arching and then rounding. So we're going to do 10 of these together. So inhale and exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Hopefully you feel your spine nice and loosened up. We're gonna do another similar pose that will help loosen up your hips in the four-point stance. So again, four-point stance, hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and we're going to make little circles with your hips. We're gonna to go to the right for a few repetitions, and then we're gonna to go to the left. And when we go to the left, you're gonna to have to think about it because, or sorry, when you switch directions, which other direction you don't favor, you might be a little bit uncomfortable with. So for me, I had to think a little bit going to my left, but maybe you're left dominant, so you might be all right. Okay, so getting ready, going for five right circles and then five left circles. So here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Good, now the other way. Got to think for a second, okay. Woo. One, two, three, four, and five. Next up, we're gonna go into a plank to downward dog to then a child pose. So holding a plank with your fingertips open up nice and wide, so as you look down on the mat, make sure that your hands are opened up nice and wide, fingers spread, there's no gaps between your fingers and the mat. You're gonna push the floor away from you, be very strong in this plank position, holding here for five seconds, and then after we're done holding for five seconds, you can pike your hips up, either by bending your knees just slightly, and then going into a downward dog, focusing on a beautiful stretch and length through your back. Holding here for five seconds, and then we're gonna drop those knees down, and then open up those knees, keep those toes together, and then go into a beautiful child's pose stretch to hold for five seconds and then curling yourself up nice and smoothly. So we'll do this together two times. So, so getting into it, pushing into your plank, nice and strong. One, two, three, four, five. Downward dog, soft bend in those knees. No pressure to get those calves to the floor, just focus on keeping your arms straight and pushing your hands deep into the floor. And we'll say that's about five seconds the whole time I've been talking, eh? Woohoo! And then dropping down to your knees and then 
bringing your two toes to touch, opening the knees, and then holding nice and smoothly for a five second beautiful child pose. And curl yourself up. Great work. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Pike those hips up. One, two, three, four, five. And then drop it down. Toes to touch. Open the knees. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Curl up. Great stuff. Now we're going to do a variation of child's pose that I really like to do that helps me get rid of any back pain that I might have or if I'm quite stiff in my arms. So we're gonna do a child's pose where you walk out to the side and then walk out to the front and then walk out to the other side. So out to the right, hold here for one second. To the front, nice and centered, one second. And then to the left, one second. Great, and let's do it one more time. This time we're gonna hold for two seconds. One, two, front. One, two, left. One, two. And curl yourself up. Now to get into the fun stuff. So laying down on your back with your knees bent at about a 90 degree angle, belly buttons are gonna be drawn in. What I'm gonna get you to do is either one, curl your ribs off the floor, your upper ribs of course, and just hold here to feel lots of tension in your abdominals, or if this is uncomfortable for you, or if you have medical conditions that you can't actually crunch forward, you can lay yourself back down nice and flat. And then whichever option you choose, you're going to kick out your right leg nice and long. Don't drop it completely to the floor. Just kind of hover it a few inches off just like this. And then return it back and then switch. We're going to exhale as we lengthen out and then inhale as we return. So we're going to do 20 of these. Here we go. One, two, three. Curl up a little bit higher if you can. Four. Belly in, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, almost there, 18, 19, and 20. Perfect. Relax your head down. Give yourself a little bit of a hug if you need to. Rock side to side. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on straightening our legs right in front of us, and we're going to, going to go into a variation of a star crunch. So with the star crunch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our legs nice and wide, and then as we bring them nice and wide, you feel a beautiful stretch. You try your best to really draw that belly button in, and if you've got any issues, of course, don't flex forward, just stay right here. But if you can flex forward, what you can do is either one variation, keep your hands right in front of your chest, flex forward, and then bring your hands down like that. And then an advanced version is to keep your hands by your head. And then as you come up, like this. So take your pick and we're going to go for 10. But don't forget, keep those pods nice and tight. Probably the hardest part of this exercise. All right, here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, 
Seven, legs nice and straight, don't forget. Eight, nine, and last one. Ooh, la la, let me tell you, I feel that one. Alrighty, now moving on to our hips. So getting them nice and warm, but when we work our hips, our core is also working. So of course, any reason we can, anything we can do to get our booty working, why not? So we're gonna just start off with 10 leg glute bridges, and then we're gonna go into 10 single leg glute bridges. Okay, so normal glute bridges, both heels on the floor, scoop those hips up like ice cream, and then draw your belly button down nice and controlled. And of course, you've got the option to dig your heels into the floor, or elevate your toes if you like as well. So going for 10. One, two, three, Four, belly in, exhale up, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Perfect. Now ten more each side and each, sorry, each leg. And just make sure the leg that you're not working, we're just going to keep it bent up just like this. So here we go and scoop those hips. One, two, three, four. Keep your toes straight, even the flat foot. Six, seven, eight, nine. Last one, 10. Good stuff, and switch. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Really push those heels into the floor. Eight, nine, and last one, ten. Good work. All right, bringing your knees together. Push any objects you have slightly over to the side. For this next exercise, it's gonna be working your core, deep abdominal muscles, and also your obliques. So with your belly button drawn in, you're going to squeeze your knees together. You're going to twist to the side. Don't drop completely, stay nice and controlled, and then you're going to exhale and then bring your legs back up to center, and then switch sides. And as you do this, try your best to stay at about 90 degrees, and then also look at my hands. I'm gonna be turning them over and I'm doing this strategically. So whichever direction I am looking at, my palms facing open. And whenever I look the opposite way, I turn that palm over and then switch to the other palm. This allows me to get a good stretch in my chest. The goal is to really get those shoulder blades down on the mat as you do this twist. So let's do 10 together here. So squeezing everything together, lift up. That's number one right here. Good. Two. Three. It is normal that you might start to roll down your mat. <laughs> Very normal. Just adjust yourself if that happens. I think I'm gonna have to do that soon. Four. Five. Exhale up. Good stuff. Hopefully you're feeling it in your sides, in your midsection, or maybe you're not feeling it there at all and you're super strong, who knows, but maybe it feels like a nice stretch for you. All right, so now, whoo, don't mind my hair. We are now going to go into the scorpion. A really good exercise I like to do to loosen up the back. And if you do crack when you do this, it's pretty normal, happens to a lot of us. But the looser your body gets, the less you'll actually crack when you do this position or this pose or stretch. So you put your hands out nice in front of you, nice and long. You're going to lift up your left leg and you're going to bring it to your right hand. And as I do this, I open up really nice through my hip. So it's a beautiful stretch. And your goal is to just keep both hands down on the floor as you do this. And then just hold for here for about a second or so and then you switch sides. 
try your best to get the toe and hands to touch. You can lower your hands down a little bit if you need to, to make them touch like that. And then switch. So we're just gonna do a total of 10. So not 10 on each side, just total the number of 10. So this way the counting is gonna be a bit easier to follow along compared to the trunk rotations or twists that we did before. All right, so let's go. One, two, three. Oh, and if your boobs get sore from this, you actually just need to make sure that you're sticking your chest out to the side. So it's actually kind of stretching out your shoulders. So my boobs are actually facing you right now. So just kind of factor that in when you're in this position. But sometimes if it is around the time of the month and you're having one of those cycles, anything could just be hurting your boobs when you're laying down and putting some form of pressure on it, right? So yeah. All right, five more to go. I think that's what happens. I start counting and then I start talking and then I lose counting. All right. Two, three, four, and five. Great. Now going into my favorite, the cobra. So with the cobra, it's very, very important that we start correctly. So we wanna position ourselves with the cobra with our fingertips underneath our shoulders or just about. We're gonna squeeze our elbows by our side. So you wanna feel, notice how I'm doing that? I wanna feel my elbows on my ribs or as close as possible to, to my body that I can do. Then from here, tops of toes down, knees lifted up off the mat, and then you're going to slowly start to lift your body up just a little bit to the point where your elbows, sorry, your belly button is still touching the mat. Just hold through here and then drop back down. Take a nice breath in, breath out. And then now that you got the phase one of this exercise, I'm gonna give you the other cues. So if you master those, now think about your elbows pointing down to your hips, squeezing just that little bit more to your rib cage, and then try to keep that there happening as you push your hands very deeply into the mat. Imagine pushing them horizontally so that you can really open up through your chest and feel your back muscles engage, like not just your lower back, you're gonna feel your mid traps engage, and that's what we really want. Think about the muscles near your elbow, where they're pointing to and pointing down, that's where we wanna feel the back muscles work. Just hold and relax. Woo. Even just holding that position for a few seconds, if you're doing it properly, will likely give you a very intense burn in your back muscles. But that, when you actually achieve that, is all I can say, it is so rewarding. I've exercised my back for years, and it wasn't until I really started to really focus in on that pose and exercise that I really started to feel those muscles work like never before. It's very easy to get caught up, you know, when you're doing pull downs, when you're doing rows, but unless you're really thinking about these muscles, it's so easy to just get caught up and just move weight or even doing a form of Cobra variation and do it incorrectly and just starting to use the upper trap muscles. So I'll just quickly actually, while we're on the topic of it, go over the Cobra done incorrectly. So sometimes what a lot of people do is they go up into their Cobra and they do this and they shrug the shoulders and their whole goal is just like straightening their elbows and they think, oh, I straightened my elbows, I'm doing it right but all they're doing is digging into the lower back and overworking the traps, so, or upper traps, shall I say. So we wanna be able to relax those shoulders down. So notice how I just did that. I brought them up and then I drop them down. And that requires a lot of strength in your mid trap muscles to use. And then from there, we'll probably just go a little bit lower to just focus in on that and not overwork our lower back. Just holding through here and that's it. That's all we need to do. And then all these muscles just really start to fire up. And of course though, when we do certain variations of exercises or like up dog and yoga, you know, the lower back will start to work a little bit more. But generally when we're focusing on that half cobra pose, we really wanna make sure we're feeling those back muscles engage. All right, I could definitely go into that pose a lot in, in a lot more detail, but hopefully that is enough and hopefully not too much to overwhelm you with making sure that you're feeling it work. All right, going into side plank. So we're gonna do a side plank together. So you're going to just hold yourself up nice and straight through here, 
belly button drawn in and you've got the option to just hang out here. Of course, if this is too hard, you can bend your knees, but try to challenge yourself so that you can get up onto those toes and just make sure that you're not collapsing those hips down like this. You really wanna bring them up. And then if you can do this, you can lift your arm up and just hold nice and strong. So we're gonna hold this for 10 seconds. If you want though, you're welcome to hold it for 20 or of course start from doing it the minute I'm talking. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. And switch sides. Here we go. Nice form, best of your ability, do what you can do. Make sure those hips aren't dropping and 10 seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. Now back onto our backs. We're gonna go for a nice supine twist to finish off. So crossing your leg over just a tad like that, and then twisting to the side as we open out and look to the opposite direction, making sure our palms facing up, taking a nice breath in, and exhale. Great work. And then switch sides. Beautiful. 